Hello everyone. Um, I hope all of you are doing uh, safe and uh, staying healthy. Uh, welcome to another lecture of uh, ME 2010. This is lecture 24. Uh, we will be continuing our journey into uh, static friction and uh, we will be solving a special type of a problem, uh, something that I think is very interesting and also quite useful, especially from the point of view of uh, you know exam type problems. These are something that you might be wanting to focus on. Uh, so this is a problem where we distinguish between the ideas of uh, tipping versus uh, sliding. Okay. Uh, so the aim for today's lecture is the following okay so we will solve a problem on uh, static friction and in this problem we will distinguish between the ideas of uh, tipping versus sliding distinguish between the situations of uh, tipping versus sliding of a body okay all right so that's the uh, basis for uh, today's uh, uh, lecture and let's get uh, started this is of course a problem on uh, static friction and let's get started by uh, drawing the figure for this uh, problem so problem Uh, in this problem, I have a box that is uh, placed in the following manner, okay? Uh, this box is also given some dimensions. Uh, we have typically not seen uh, bodies with uh, dimensions and friction so far. And uh, so this is something that uh, uh, we are going to be seeing now, okay? Uh, so here is a box that is uh, placed on the ground. And uh, let's say that uh, here is the ground surface. And uh, um, I'm just going to draw it uh, as uh, shown okay the box is uh, labeled as b so box is uh, b and uh, the ground is g okay capital G and uh, we are told that the coefficient of static friction between the box and the ground uh, this is uh, given to us as uh, 0 0.3 okay so I'm just going to call that here so this is mu between the box and the ground is 0 0.3 and uh, I'm told that the height of this uh, box from the ground is uh, uh, 1.5 meters so this is 1.5 meters tall so fairly uh, tall box as you can see okay uh, so let me draw the height here okay this is 1.5 meters and uh, as usual we will have dotted lines to signify the um, uh, height of uh, all of our uh, quantities okay and uh, then we will also say that the box has a width of uh, one meter so this is the width of the box which i'm going to be drawing here okay uh, this is one meter long and of course the box also has to have a mass okay so this is uh, one meter all of these are in si units so it makes it easier for us and uh, I'm told that the mass of this box is uh, 50 uh, kilograms. Okay, so mass of the box is 50 kilograms. And uh, let us assume acceleration due to gravity G as 10 meters per second square. Typically, it's 9.8 or 9.81, but it's, uh, you know, cutting uh, things fine. We can just assume it to be 10 meters per second square. All right, now uh, something interesting is going to happen. Uh, we're going to have a person who's going to come and push on this box, okay? So I'm going to put that person in here. I'm going to maybe uh, reduce the size of that uh, person, okay? Let's see. That's the situation here. So this person is coming and pushing on this box. And so person uh, will be labeled as uh, a P. Of course, this person has ears and so on. I did not draw it out earlier and probably some hair as well looks like me all right and uh, the person uh, we will label as uh, p okay and uh, the mass of the person is uh, given to us as 75 kilograms okay so mass of the person 
is uh, 75 kilograms and of course once again we will assume uh, the acceleration due to gravity to be 10 meters per second square uh, we're not given any dimensions for the person okay dimensions for the person are not given to us Of course, the dimension of the box is uh, given to us, as you can see in this problem. But uh, we are told that the coefficient of uh, static friction uh, between the person and the floor or the ground is uh, 0 0.4. Okay, so mu p g is 0 0.4. Okay, so let me uh, write this out. So mu b g is the coefficient of static friction. between the box and the ground okay okay and then this is uh, given to us as having a value of 0 0.3 and then mu pg is the coefficient of static friction between the person and the ground and this is 0 0.4 okay so these are the things that are uh, uh, given to us now what are the things that we are supposed to do in this uh, particular problem okay uh, so what to do in this problem so we are asked to find okay a the minimum force that is applied by the person for motion to impend okay find the minimum minimum force with which the person p should push on the box for motion to impend Okay, this same thing can be recast in the following form. So in this, uh, you see, I have used a uh, minimum force with which the person pushes on the box. Okay, the box is uh, uh, capital B. Okay, uh, this is equivalent to saying the same thing. Okay, the above statement uh, statement is uh, equivalent. I'm sorry here. I need to have my letters joined together. So the above statement is equivalent to the following statement. And I'm going to say this is or statement A is find the maximum that is find the maximum force that the person applies on the box okay for which motion does not impend Such that motion does not impend. Okay, they are pretty much the same things. Uh, this statement here, okay, they are the same thing. So these are equivalent. Uh, that's something that I want you to understand and uh, you know I can either ask you statement a here or statement uh, a prime okay maybe let's call this is uh, a prime here uh, these two statements are equivalent statements okay they are equivalent statements All right, and uh, the other thing that I also want to find in this uh, problem is the uh, following. Okay, so find um, B, find the minimum friction coefficient between 
person P and ground G okay for which the person does not slip okay for which the person does not slip all right and uh, once again the keyword is find the minimum coefficient between the person p and the ground g for which the person does not slip all right so here is our problem we have a box here okay uh, we have a box and uh, let's say that this uh, person is wearing shoes as you can see here okay uh, red sneakers um, there is a person who is trying to push on the box okay and uh, if I so look at the way the person is pushing on the box I'm gonna assume that the force exerted by the person on the box is horizontal okay so this is an assumption that I'm going to be making okay so let let me maybe write that statement down so we're gonna have an assumption since we don't know any better okay we're gonna assume that the force exerted between the person P and the box B is horizontal in direction okay this is a big assumption because I don't know the force exerted is horizontal okay so once again uh, we come back to the box here and then i have the person i'm told the coefficient of static friction between the box and the ground is given to me between the person and the ground is given to me uh, the mass of the person is 75 kilograms mass of the box is 50 kilograms dimensions for the person are not given for the box it's given to me 1.5 meters so close to uh, three a little more than three feet uh, uh, four or four feet i guess uh, then uh, the uh, width of the box is around uh, one meter here okay uh, then we are told to find the following find the minimum force with which the person p should push on the box for motion to impend and the above statement is equivalent to the following statement that is find the maximum force that the person applies on the box such that the motion does not impend okay so, and uh, as we said uh, these are equivalent statements okay so these are equivalent statements statements a and a prime and then the other thing that i need to find is uh, find the minimum coefficient of static friction between the person on the ground for which the person does not slip obviously this is not 0.4 because then i would not be asking this question if it is 0.4 well and good but we have to find out and an assumption is that the force exerted between the person and the box is uh, horizontal in direction this is something that i'm going to be assuming okay now uh, before we start the problem some nomenclature okay the way we are going to be addressing some of these things so nomenclature nomenclature meaning what are the different forces that we are defining here I'm going to call the following okay F mu BG is the friction force between the box and the ground okay then f mu p g is the friction force between the person and the ground okay box is b person is p ground is g okay then likewise uh, we're going to have two more quantities n b g and n p g this is the normal force between the box and the ground and the person on the ground respectively okay uh, these are the nomenclature terms that we're going to be uh, making use of okay 
and uh, I guess uh, the other thing is uh, the force exerted between the person and the box we got to call it by a certain name so I'm just going to call it as uh, uh, PBP okay uh, so the other terminology that I'm going to be making use of is uh, PBP this is the force exerted between person which is P and the box which is B and assumed to be horizontal and this follows the other assumptions that we have made above okay so this is uh, uh, something that that is important to know okay and acceleration due to gravity and all that is known to me uh, then what i'm going to do is i'm going to calculate the weight of the box and the weight of the person okay um, so let's uh, start off with the same color so d e uh, w b uh, and w b okay w p which is uh, mass of the person times acceleration due to gravity is uh, 75 times 10 which is uh, 750 newtons so w p is 750 newtons this is the weight of the person okay and then w b which is mass of the box times acceleration due to gravity that's going to be 50 times 10 and this i'm going to uh, call as the this is 500 newtons and uh, this is the weight of the box all right then what i'm going to do so so these are our nomenclatures so once again f mu b is friction force between the box and the ground and uh, friction force between the person and the ground is f mu pg nbg and npg normal force between the box and the ground and the person and the ground respectively pbp force exerted between the person and the box and this is assumed to be horizontal wp is the weight of the person wb is the weight of the box and uh, just for the sake of uh, um, you know simplification i'm going to call uh, the points on the box okay so um, let me call them as the uh, following so let me call this uh, point as um, this point here is essentially what I'm interested in and uh, so this point here I'm going to be calling I think we haven't used the letter C so I'm going to be calling it as point C okay C is uh, a special point for us okay uh, notice that that's a point of contact between the box and the ground at the edge of the box okay and uh, coefficient of friction this is uh, all between the box and the uh, ground it's not necessarily only at sea it could be at any point between uh, the ground and the box okay so i'm just going to write out one last terminology here uh, so point number f so point labeled as uh, c is the contact point between the end of the box or edge of the box and the ground and uh, thing to note is that uh, the coefficient of uh, friction between the box and the ground is defined at any point where there is contact between the box and the ground it's going to be the same at all points okay uh, that's something to keep in mind okay all right so what are we going to do in this problem okay there are a couple of things uh, that that can go on um what uh, we're going to see is um okay um if uh, the force applied is very small right then you see that the box is not going to move uh, if the force applied is very very large then the box is actually going to be in dynamic motion it's going to start accelerating so my basic aim is to find the force applied such that the motion is impending that is motion is on the verge of occurring and so we are searching for this minimum force p uh, that is applied such that the motion is impending okay uh, something that you want to keep in mind okay uh, so keep a note here our aim okay if person pushes box with a very small force then nothing happens right but if uh, the person pushes the 
box with a very large force the box accelerates which leads us to dynamics we don't want that okay what we want is to find the minimum force applied by the person such that motion impends that is motion is on the verge of occurring okay on the verge of occurring all right so this is the key statement here and uh, so which means that essentially uh, so once again just to read the statement if the person pushes with a very small force then nothing happens if the person pushes the box with a very large force the box accelerates becomes dynamics motion what do we want we want to find the minimum force applied with the person such that motion impends or motion is on the verge of occurring and uh, we want to see uh, we want to hopefully make sure that you know as the person is pushing on the box is the person able to move the box and if it is uh, if he or she is able to move the box then if they are able to move the box then what exactly is the minimum force okay which is uh, required to put the box on the verge of motion okay now what are the cases of motion that can occur okay there are several cases that can occur so here are the situations i go back to this figure of my person and the box and you see that okay as the person pushes on the box the person might stand still and the box will be on the verge of sliding as the person pushes on the box then there is another situation where the person will be staying still but the box can start tipping and then finally as the person pushes on the box perhaps the third situation that can happen is the box is standing still but the person is slipping and one important thing that we need in this problem is we need the height from the point of application of the force to the ground for the person okay so this height here that is an important height which we are going to be given in the problem okay so this height is 0 0.75 meters okay this height here is 0 0.75 meters and uh, this is given to us in the problem that's something that you want to make a note of okay this is given to us okay I did not specify this beforehand, but it's uh, it's given to us, and uh, of course uh, this is the entire box. Okay, so this height is zero point seven five meters. It's uh, given to us, and uh, so I'm going to start stating the different cases of uh, motion. Okay, uh, so the cases of motion, cases of impending motion, are the following. And as I'm writing the cases of impending motion, I'm going to write down certain mathematical statements and some of these will start making more sense as we uh, start looking at, um, uh, you know, the uh, problem in detail. So I'm just going to write down certain things and then they'll start making more sense. Okay, uh, what are the cases? So I'm going to have case A. Okay, as the person pushes on the box. person stands still person will not have impending motion and the box could be on the verge of sliding okay this is the first case and mathematically speaking this implies because the person is not impending this means that the friction force between the person and the ground is going to be less than f mu person and ground max and uh, this implies that f mu pg is going to be less than mu s P G right and uh, uh, times 
in PG okay and the other statement is that F mu B G is equal to F mu B G max and this is equal to mu s b g times n b g okay i just want to write the g properly here uh, b g okay this is the statement for case a so that's something that you want to specify so this is case a and uh, the other thing that i want to specify is uh, for case a you will see this okay we will see this as we discuss tipping versus sliding and also for case a uh, also for case A, uh, for case A, the location of the normal force N B G on the box. is an unknown okay that is an important 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 statement okay the location of the normal force nbg on the box is an unknown quantity if you are assuming the box to be on the verge of sliding okay this is an important thing okay the person does not have impending motion so person will not be impending okay and the box will be on the verge of sliding this is the first case then i go to the second case okay case b in this case the following situation can happen okay as the person pushes on the box the person might stay still person will not have impending motion and the box will be on the verge of tipping that is an important statement to to make so as the person pushes the person will not have impending motion and the box will be on the verge of tipping okay and uh, what does this mean mathematically if i write this in a form of an equation so for case uh, um, a b we can uh, say the following okay uh, once again we can say that f mu p g is going to be less than mu s p g times n p g because the person does not have any impending motion then here is what i can also say f mu bg is also less than mu s bg times n bg this is something that is important and the location of the normal force n bg on the box is known that is a very 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 important thing to realize okay the location of the normal force on the box is now a known quantity and you will see that this will be actually at the uh, contact point label c okay this will be at the uh, contact point label c i want to just uh, summarize and say that okay these are all for case um, b okay this is for case b the mathematical statements okay and uh, we will see that this location here location will be at the point label C on the figure in the first page all right so second case as the person pushes on the box the person will not have impending motion so that implies that the friction force on the person is not going to be uh, greater than the maximum available friction force and uh, then the second case is that the box will be tipping it is not on the verge of sliding it's on the verge of tipping so its friction force will still be less than the maximum available friction force but the location of the normal force is now known okay then the third case can happen okay 
case C. As the person pushes on the box, what is the third case that can happen? The person might actually slip, but the box will just stay there. Okay, so as the person pushes on the box, person pushes the box, the person will be on the verge of sliding. And the box will stay still. Of course, you can also say that uh, the person might tip, but I'm not given the dimension. So I'll make a statement of this uh, later. Okay, uh, this implies the following. Okay, uh, this means that f mu p g is equal to mu s p g times n p g, and uh, then uh, we will see that okay, um, f mu b g will be less than mu s b g times n b g okay this is uh, for uh, case c there is also a case d which i will write out okay but we will ignore this case for the time being because of the following reason okay as a person pushes the person will be on the verge of tipping and the box will stay still okay now what does this imply this implies uh, we are going to ignore this case we will ignore case d because we do not know the dimensions of the person of the person okay so that's uh, the summary for us so we will ignore this particular case and uh, how to tackle this problem how to attack this problem is by first of all understanding the difference between tipping and sliding okay uh, so tipping versus sliding okay so how to solve okay we need to understand the difference between to understand uh, what it means to tip versus slide okay all right so we have everything uh, laid out and uh, here is a basic idea okay um, now it's fairly easy to see that uh, you know if I if I have the box let let me let me draw a quick uh, figure okay so here is uh, the box and uh, let me reduce the length of this so that we are able to draw it more easily okay so here is the box okay and uh, i'm sorry once again this is not coming out too well uh, so here is the box let me just hang on to that okay i'm just going to copy that and uh, paste that uh, here okay so copy that and uh, uh, paste it again i'm going to draw two two situations okay uh, in the first situation uh, let's say that uh, if the force applied by the person is uh, very very low to the ground so here is the ground uh, let me first uh, draw the ground okay so here is the ground and uh, once again here is the ground as well for this situation okay all right uh, so in this case uh, if uh, the force applied by the person is very low to the ground okay so let's call this as uh, the force applied by the person on the box i think we call it as pbp or ppb uh, i think we call it as pbp uh, box on the person if the force applied by the person on the uh, box is um, very low to the ground then it means that uh, the box is perhaps going to slide right 
But then I take this force and I apply this force a little higher above. Then what's perhaps going to happen is perhaps the box will tip. And you can you can think of this uh, uh, by doing this experiment yourself at home by right? taking this box and then uh, taking this uh, force and then applying it here. Okay, so P B P, which which means that this height where the force is applied from the ground is going to be the crucial uh, thing for us here. Okay, so let me call this height as uh, height H. Okay, this is height H and uh, likewise uh, this is another height uh, h here so uh, the same height here so this versus uh, that case so okay case uh, case one versus case two uh, we see that if the height uh, at which the person is uh, sliding the box is very low to the ground the chances of the box sliding is more than the box tipping okay so in the first figure figure one okay this is figure 1 and uh, this is figure 2 okay in uh, figure 1 uh, the height at which the height I'm sorry at which the person pushes on the box is very close to the ground is uh, uh, very close to the ground that is the height h is small okay and in figure 2 the height at which the person pushes on the box is far away from the ground that is uh, the height h i think i need to write this height a little better here so this is the height h okay that is height h is uh, a larger value the height h was a small value here okay and the basic idea is this if the height h is a smaller value and uh, versus a larger value then the chances of sliding is more in figure one chances of tipping is more in figure two so the basic idea idea is that uh, so if h is small the box has more of a chance to slide and uh, if h is a slide versus tipping to slide rather than tip tip or fall over right uh, if the height h is large then the box has more of a chance to tip rather than slide okay uh, so if the height is large then the box will tip rather than slide if the height is small the box will slide rather than tip which means that perhaps there is a minimum height h minimum at which uh, you know away from uh, the uh, horizontal surface of the ground at which the box has an equal probability of tipping and sliding and this is exactly what we want to find out okay and uh, here is here is our point c from before i'm just going to mark this again okay here is the point c uh, so this implies the following so key statement here a key note is that this implies that there is a minimum height h minimum at which box is on the verge of tipping and sliding at the contact point okay 
all right so this is the basic idea that uh, we're going to be doing and and uh, here is here is the thing for us if if i can find this height h minimum and then if i compare it with the height at which the person is pushing on the box then we can say that okay if uh, the height given in the problem is uh, less than this uh, minimum height then i know that uh, the person is actually going to uh, have a, has a better chance of sliding the box than tipping and vice versa okay so for us uh, what is the upshot for us we will calculate this h minimum and then compare with the height of h is equal to 0 0.75 meters look at figure in page one okay and this implies that uh, you know if uh, h is less than h minimum then slides okay or more of a chance of sliding and if h is greater than h minimum then tips or greater chance of uh, tipping and if you are at h is equal to h minimum if h is equal to h minimum then tips and slides at the contact point c which means that the key for us is to actually calculate this h minimum and uh, let us do that okay uh, so our aim is to now calculate calculate h minimum and at h minimum we know the following okay uh, so what are the things that we know at h minimum we know that uh, the uh, uh, box is on the verge of sliding at the contact point c okay the box is on the verge of sliding at the contact point okay which means that um, the force of uh, friction for us f mu b g is actually going to be mu s b g times n b g okay that's one thing that we know and we also know that a box is on the verge of tipping which implies we know the location of n b g and it is at the contact c okay so that's our basic idea and uh, so at h minimum we know the following boxes on the verge of sliding boxes on the verge of tipping and uh, we're going to make use of this idea to find out uh, what this uh, h minimum is and then uh, we will go back and then look at the different cases we have and we will kind of uh, start getting uh, cutting back on our cases okay uh, so i'm going to draw a free body diagram of the box at h is equal to uh, h minimum okay and uh, here is the figure okay so i have this box it's fairly easy to draw the free body diagram of these creatures okay um the key thing here is this okay i'm, I'm given the uh, uh force that is acting i don't know where that force is acting so i'm just going to call this force as uh, pbp okay p pp force exerted by the person on the box it's going to be horizontal uh, this is the ground surface then i'm going to have the weight of the box which is acting vertically down here okay so that's going to be wb then here is my contact point uh, c right which we label in the blue color so this is the point c and the idea is this i mean if i'm if i'm trying to tip this box if it's on the verge of tipping you know that the box has lost contact with all the points on the ground except at point c right this is something that i want to make a note of right at the verge of uh, tipping i'm sorry the 
the box has lost contact at all points on the ground except at point C okay and I want to take this and uh, you know I want to take this and put it in the next page uh, here okay uh, I want to slide this uh, down here so that so that I can draw my free body diagram so uh, this is the basic uh, situation so uh, then I have uh, the forces that are acting at this uh, contact point I'm going to be calling them as the normal force NBG between the box and the ground and then I have the friction force which is uh, F mu BG okay let me just write the letter G carefully okay and uh, then here are the distances or the dimensions uh, so first of all this is a height that I do not know that is going to be H minimum for me okay <clears throat> this is H minimum I don't know I have to solve for this height I know this distance here okay this distance from here to there uh, that is uh, known to me as uh, half of uh, one meter so that's going to be 0 0.5 meters uh, so let me draw this in that dotted line that we usually use for talking about heights and distances and so on so that's going to be 0 0.5 uh, meters and um, the basic idea is uh, we know that it's on the verge of sliding so f mu bg is related to mu s times uh, nbg so uh, it's on the verge of uh, sliding right so verge of sliding which implies that f mu s uh, mu bg i'm sorry f mu bg is mu s bg times n bg so this is going to be 0 0.3 times n bg right because uh, that is the uh, force that we have i'm sorry this uh, suddenly became a circle <laughs> okay uh, this is 0 0.3 times n bg right and uh, so I can come back and uh, write that this is 0 0.3 times n b g. This is because this is a box on the verge of sliding. And since the box is on the verge of tipping, we know that the contact point uh, C is the only point of contact between the box and the uh, ground. Okay. Uh, since it's on the verge of uh, tipping. Right, uh, let me write this uh, properly, tipping, the contact point C is the only point of contact between box and the ground and so we know the location of n b g to b at point c this is why we know the location of that particular point okay now all i have to do is uh, start summing uh, forces summing moments and so on so the first thing i do is uh, sum forces in the x direction i think i have uh, space to do that here so i'm going to start summing forces in the x direction if i do that and say forces pointing to the right are positive then I know that uh, P B P is equal to F mu B G okay that's one thing then I have uh, sum of forces in the Y direction equal to zero so if I point this up then I see that uh, N B G is equal to W of the box which is 500 newtons right and then I also know that F mu BG is 0.3 times uh, N, uh, so this is 0 0.3 times N BG, which tells me that P BP, when the box is on the verge of tipping and sliding, is going to be 0 0.3 times um, 500 or uh, 150 newtons. Okay, so this is something that we have found out. How to find h minimum is by summing moments about the contact point okay so if i uh, sum moments about the contact point and i'm going to do that uh, here so 
if I sum moments about C and I set them equal to zero, I get the following. Okay, uh, WB times uh, C uh, point five is a counterclockwise moment, so that's going to be uh, WB times zero point five, and then PBP times H minimum is clockwise. P BP times H minimum is equal to zero, which implies that H minimum is uh, going to be WB times 0.5 divided by PBP. Okay, so I'm going to take these uh, couple of things and uh, put put them down here. Okay, I'm going to bring them down. So I'm going to copy this and and paste that here. So this is one thing that we have from the equilibrium equations, and then uh, here is another thing that we have. Okay. from the equilibrium equations okay and uh, so we can see that h minimum is going to be 500 times 0.5 divided by 150 okay and uh, these uh, calculations i had done uh, sometime here and uh, this is approximately equal to uh, 1.6 uh, uh, meters okay so this is approximately equal to 1.6 meters which means uh, that h minimum which is the height at which the box is on the verge of tipping and sliding is 1.6 meters approximately for us now we know that if h is less than h minimum then it's going to slide if h is greater than h minimum it's going to tip so for our problem our problem h is given to us as 0.75 meters this is given in figure one okay uh, in page one i'm sorry this is given in page one okay uh, which implies that uh, h is less than h minimum in our problem which implies that for us we can say that the box will not tip Okay, so which means that we can ignore tipping motion for our problem since H, which is equal to 0.75 meters, is less than H minimum, which is 1.6 meters. Okay. Uh, so once again, uh, just a recap of uh, what we have been doing here. Uh, we have the box. We have the force that is applied. We assume the force to be horizontal. We say H minimum is the distance that we want to calculate. Uh, we do summation of forces in the X direction. And uh, we know that since the box is on the verge of sliding, I have a relationship between F mu, BG and NBG. Then by force balance in the Y direction, I can find NBG. And then uh, likewise, I can find uh, the force FB, uh, PBP, which is applied uh, based on uh, the calculation of the friction force. Once I do that, I sum moments about the contact point C. Okay, and then once I do that, I get the H minimum, which we obtain to be 1.6 meters. When we look at our problem, you know, if I go back uh, to the first figure that we had uh, drawn, uh, we see that the height at which the person is trying to push the box is 0.75 meters, which obviously means that uh, H, this is the height H, this is uh, going to be less than 1.6, which is the height that we uh, calculated uh, here. And then since our height H is less than H minimum, it slides. If it were not the case, then it would be tipping, okay? Which means that, um, you know, in summary, we can uh, ignore the tipping motion, okay? So I want to underline this uh, particular word for us. So we can ignore tipping motion for our problem since H is less than H minimum. Okay, which means that if I go back uh, to the different cases of motion that we had written here, right? Uh, we had case A, case B, and case C. Look at case A, uh, case B. Case B, we said that uh, perhaps the box will have uh, tipping motion. Now, this complete case B can be neglected. 
okay which means we are out to choose between case a and case c so i want to write that statement down uh, sorry for going back and forth here but i had to do that okay so this means we can neglect or ignore case b for our problem since h which is 0.75 meters is less than h minimum okay which means we have to select between case a and case c which means we have to select between case a and case c and uh, so let me start by selecting case a okay so let us select case a and see if we are correct and case a is that the person is not in impending motion so f mu p g should be less than mu s P G times N P G person does not impend. Um, I guess it's a shorthand of saying is not an impending motion, does not impend movement. Then F mu B G is uh, equal to mu S B G times N bg the box is on the verge of sliding this is because h is less than h minimum for us okay and the other key thing that we said for case a was that uh, the location of the normal force is now not known to us location of uh, this looks like an h it should be an l <laughs> okay the location of n b g is no longer known to us okay and uh, so now i'm going to start drawing the free body diagram okay so for case a free body diagram of the box that's fairly straightforward okay uh, so i have the box here okay and here is the box approximately a rectangle now i start looking at the forces there is a force which is acting which is the force which is the person is pushing on the box p bp important thing is i know the height at which this force is acting okay this is the height h which we said is 0 0.75 meters okay this height h is 0 0.75 meters and h minimum i'm sorry is greater than that h okay okay that's the thing that we want to make a note of okay I, I think this is not a good place to make a note of that uh, i will make a note of that down below here h minimum which is 1.6 meters is greater than h for us okay then what are the other forces there is the force of uh, the weight of the box which is acting vertically down okay so that's going to be wb which is uh, equal to 500 newtons this is one thing that we know then here are the other forces okay uh, here is the force uh, of the uh, contact between the ground and the box and then the force of the friction between the box and the ground obviously this is going to be horizontal this is f mu b g this is n b g okay and then i have uh, some distances which i have marked here one of the distances has been already marked here uh, the other distance i want to mark here is this between the line of action of uh, the uh, uh, weight of the box and then the location of the normal force okay that distance is not known to us okay and i'm going to call that distance as little x 
Okay, so x is the distance between location of normal force and uh, the weight of the box. And uh, this is an unknown distance, okay? And something that we can find from equilibrium. Uh, but then we know that the box is on the verge of sliding, which means that F mu BG is equal to um, mu S BG times N BG. This is because we say that the box is on the verge of sliding. Okay, let me write that right. Okay, and uh, so what, what we do is we start summing forces up. Okay, uh, so sum of forces in the x direction, basic uh, ideas are the same in all of these problems. If I sum forces in the x direction, I get P, BP is equal to F mu BG, which is 0 0.3 times N BG. Then I sum forces in the y direction, I end up getting NBG is equal to WB, which is equal to 500 newtons, which tells me that P is 0.3 times 500 or 150 newtons. Important thing is, uh, okay, what is the location of this uh, force X? Uh, this is PBP, so I just have to rewrite that. Uh, this is P. BP, which is uh, 0 0.3 times uh, one, uh, 500, which is 150. I think I had to uh, write the same thing here as well. So this is actually PBP. I, I think I got that right there. Okay, PBP. That's fine. Sometimes I second guess myself uh, and see if I'm right or not. Okay. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to now call this point here as uh, a point D. Okay, this is point D. Okay, where the normal force is acting and I'm going to start summing moments about that particular point sum of moments about the point d i'm going to set all counterclockwise moments to be zero uh, what are the moments uh, and positive and then set all the moments to be zero there is wb times x and then there is pbp times h okay if you do the basic moment balance you'll get the following okay this is going to be wb times the distance of x minus pbp times the distance of h is equal to zero which tells you that x is p b p times h divided by w b or x is uh, p b p which is 150 times 0.75 is the height h divided by 500 and it's approximately 0.2 to 5 meters okay so x is 0.225 meters so and this was an unknown to begin with okay that's something that is very important so what we have found out from case a so from case a p bp is 150 newtons now how do we know if this is right if this is correct here is how we do it. We draw the free body diagram of the person P and then check to see if F mu P G is less than mu s P G times n P G. Okay, using I'm sorry, using the value of P B P is equal to one fifty newtons. All right. So now I'm going to draw the free body diagram of the person. Okay, here is the person. I have to scoot back up and uh, capture this person who had drawn pretty well to begin with. So I'm not going to lose out on that. 
okay so here is the person I'm going to copy that and then bring that creature down here all right I'm going to paste that and uh, get rid of uh, some of these things um, well maybe I'll not get rid of that I'll get rid of this okay and uh, get rid of uh, that entire thing as well don't need that okay so cut that off and uh, what are the forces that are now going to be acting on the person first of all uh, there is going to be the weight of the person which is acting down on the center of mass acting vertically down okay so this is the weight of the person I'm going to bring that down here okay and uh, let's say that this is WP weight of the person which is 750 Newton which was uh, you know 75 times 10 previously right uh, I, don't, I don't we don't need that I think you can go back and look at the problem uh, then I have uh, the force uh, which is acting on the person right the person is pushing on the box which means the box is pushing back on the person with an equal and opposite force and so that force is going to be P B P which I know is 150 newtons then I have another force which is the force between the person and the ground and uh, so that force is going to be acting vertically up that's going to be n p g and then you see that the force pbp is pushing the person to the left so the friction force is going to be pointing to the right between the person's shoes and the ground and uh, so that's uh, the friction force there and that's going to be f mu p g and uh, we know for case a we need to check to see if f mu pg is less than mu s pg times n pg okay let's do that and uh, we will be done with this problem if i sum forces in the x direction here is what i get i get f mu pg is equal to p bp which means that f mu pg is 150 newtons then if I sum forces in the y direction, what are the forces? NPG is equal to WP, which means NPG is 750 newtons. Then, from Coulomb's law, F mu PG max, which is mu S pg times n pg that's going to be 0 0.4 times 750 okay and uh, 0.4 times 750 is uh, uh, 300 newtons which means that mu s pg times n pg is 300 newtons okay and so this is uh, we see that um, f mu pg which is 150 newtons is less than f mu pg max which is 300 newtons hence case a is the case which means that case a is the successful case which means the person has to apply a minimum force P B P is equal to 150 newtons to cause the block to start sliding to cause the block to start sliding okay so this is the key statement in this problem and uh, if I have to find out a uh, mu uh, person uh, and ground minimum here is uh, a quick calculation okay to find mu s pg minimum i take the value of f mu that i calculated take the value of f mu pg we calculated and divided by NPG 
okay and i wanted to think about this and uh, if you have any questions you can of course get back to me on this but but uh, the idea is fairly simple um so that the person does not slip what is the minimum coefficient of uh, friction it has to be whatever the friction force is currently divided by the normal force okay this is uh, the minimum this is going to be f mu pg calculated divided by n pg okay this is uh, going to be 150 divided by 750 okay that's uh, 0 0.2 and obviously you see we see from the given problem that mu s pg which is uh, given to us mu s pg that is uh, that is given to us and equal to 0.4 is larger than the minimum mu s pg which obviously implies that uh, this is another way to say that the person does not slip but the box is the one that is on the verge of slipping another way to say that the person does not slip or slide and the box is the one that will have motion impending that will have impending motion okay and uh, so uh, what we found out is this okay so case a was a successful case and just tells us that uh, you know p bp minimum was 150 newtons and then mu s pg minimum was 0 0.2 okay these are the things that we actually found out and uh, just as a reiteration of uh, you know sl sliding versus uh, t tipping uh, the typical free body diagram will look uh, in a, in a, a look look like this okay uh, so in general okay free body diagram of tipping versus sliding will look as below okay uh, so i'm going to draw that uh, down here and uh, the important thing is uh, when h is greater than h minimum then this is tipping h is less than h minimum slide and when h is equal to h minimum tip plus slide okay and i'm going to draw the free body diagrams uh, down below here okay so let me draw two boxes mm, i'm sorry and we're almost done with this problem i appreciate your patience uh, uh, those of you who are sitting and watching these uh, videos i hope uh, it is worth your time I've, I've, I've had great fun making these videos of course um i wish that we could we could all meet in person of course um and then go through all these concepts i would be better able to explain and answer some of your questions but but you know we got to make the best with what we have uh, so if this is a free body diagram i'm just going to draw the weight here okay uh, that's the weight here that's also the same thing acting here okay so there's not much of a difference between the two so this is the weight of the box uh, weight of the uh, box then in this case i'm going to say that okay this is the value of uh, this is a place where the force is acting so this is where p bp and in this case you know i'm going to say that okay this is h and uh, in this case i'm going to say that okay p bp is acting at a height that is greater than the critical height so this is p bp 
and uh, this is the height h here in this uh, particular case we're going to get rid of uh, one of these um apologies once again i needed to get this guy straight and once in a while it never happens to be straight okay i'm not sure what's going on here i'm just going to cut that off okay and try one more time all right this is not bad this is h in this case so this is uh, the case where um, i want to label this uh, the case where h is uh, less than h minimum okay this is the case where h is greater than h minimum okay this is the case of uh, sliding versus tipping if it is on the verge of tipping then this is the only point that is in contact with the ground okay if it is on the verge of sliding and not tipping then i'm going to have the contact point acting somewhere here and then here are going to be my uh, forces okay and uh, that's one force there here is the friction force and the normal force now this is uh, f mu b g n b g this is n b g of course and then f mu b g the important thing is that you know there is a distance uh, between these two apologies okay let's uh for some reason i'm not able to draw straight lines today there is a distance between um these things that distance i'm going to call as x okay uh, this is a situation of uh sliding and uh, not tipping okay this is sliding okay where h is less than h minimum and uh, this is the situation of tipping um, where h is greater than h minimum and in the case of uh, sliding we know that f mu vg is equal to mu s bg times n bg okay and the location x is not known okay this is the x that i am talking about and in this particular case f mu bg is less than mu s bg times n bg that's one thing and location of n b g is at point c and then of course uh, we have the situation where uh, h is equal to h minimum let me also draw that out okay i think i can uh, do that here so if i paste uh, well i guess i did not have the right thing to paste and uh, the third situation is where you have both tipping and sliding taking place <coughs> excuse me okay last one all right and uh, so in this uh, case i'm still going to have the weight of the box which is acting vertically down okay this is w of the box and then i'm still going to have the contact point here i'm going to have the normal force that is acting here the force uh, that is acting here f mu bg this is n bg important thing is that uh, the force which is acting here is now at the critical height which is h minimum or h critical if you want to call it that way that is also completely fine this is h minimum okay this is h minimum this is p bp this is the case where uh, h is equal to h minimum where tip plus slide occurs and so in this case i have the following f mu bg is equal to mu s 
bg times n bg because it's on the verge of sliding and also location of n bg is known okay that's going to be at the contact point and uh, let me scoot these uh, things up a little above so that you know we don't uh, get confused and so on so these are the uh, three situations where i have um, h less than h minimum uh, this is the case where there is only sliding okay slides are on the verge of sliding this is the case where there is tipping <coughs> Okay, and uh, this is the situation where there is uh, tipping and sliding. Okay, and uh, let me make sure that this guy is written here. Okay, and uh, so just to recap everything, if you say that the box is going to slide, then the location of the normal force is not known to us. But we do know that uh, since it's going to slide, the friction force is related to the normal force by the Coulomb law of uh, friction. Okay, um, and uh, the important, other important thing is, if it's going to slide, then the height h at which the force is acting is going to be less than h minimum. If it is uh, going to be tipping, the height h is greater than h minimum. We know the location of the normal force, but we don't know the relationship between f mu and n bg. Okay, because it does not satisfy Coulomb's law. And the last situation is where you have both tipping and sliding taking place, where you say that, okay, uh, the uh, Coulomb's law is uh, satisfied here, okay, and then the location of NBG is also known to us, okay, that is also an important uh, variable that is known to us. And uh, this is a situation where you calculate the height h minimum and then you do the comparison. Okay, uh, so this is a really good problem for us. Uh, we were able to do all these uh, three different uh, cases of uh, uh, motion slipping versus sliding. Slipping or sliding, this is the same thing. I just want to make a note. Slipping and sliding. Actually, Paul Simon has a really good song called Slip Sliding Away. I don't know if you if you get to this point in the lecture, I hope you are able to look at uh, Paul Simon's uh, song, uh, Slip Sliding Away. All right. Okay. Uh, once again, uh, thank you very much for your patience. I hope all of you are staying healthy and staying safe. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.